everyone. Hi. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode 29 of Deadbeat Son with your host, Trey Lamb. It's Trey Lamb. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. I keep hearing that song. And women are feeling themselves about uh, being a problem. Taking pride in being a problem. It's uh, it's Tuesday, January 31st, end of the month. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I know this episode's coming out a little late in the day, and the reason for that is thus. Um, I had an episode recorded, had an, a road podcast episode recorded, and uh, I deleted it off my SD card by accident. Because that's, that's just how we roll sometimes, dude. Sometimes you put in a lot of work for stuff, and then you just get rid of it all without, without meaning to. Um, boy, let me tell you, it was a good one. And uh, maybe, I think I still have, like... The audio from some of it doesn't matter. It's over now. Um, I only told some like incredibly dark secrets and uh, probably never talk about it again. So what do we got today? I was on the road. I was on the road, obviously, doing a, doing a little tour. I did it. I did a little tour. Your boy did a, a little tour. That's That's like... That's thrice now I've done that in my life where I've gone on a little mini tour of like, you know, four or five spots, a run of four or five different shows. And uh, this time, you know, Austin, Texas, New Orleans, Baton Rouge and Lafayette. Um, And it was fun, man. It was fun. Got to see different parts of the country. Um you know, and it really, the takeaway that I got from the whole trip, I'm going to start with that before I go into it. But the takeaway that I got is, man, I have been, I, I learned that I've been too confident. I know that's not, uh, conducive to the kind of theme of this podcast, but, um, if you can believe that I, me, Trey Lamb, was, uh, I was feeling myself too much out here. I didn't realize, you know, I got to, uh, you know, it's it's cool to be like, I, I don't know, I just bought into my own hype. And I started to think, I was thinking that, oh, oh yeah, I'm the guy, I can do eh, whatever, you know, oh, I'm this and that. And then I go on this, sh- this run of shows and, um, you know, saw some pretty light crowds and uh they were fun but they weren't very many of them uh or as, at least there weren't as many as i anticipated and i was kind of hopeful that you know i'd be like dude i i thought i was i thought it was a lot more but uh yeah and it doesn't help that i got like all these people a small handful of people tell them, you know, that are like hyping me up. Oh man, you got so many followers. You got this and that. It doesn't mean Jack squat, dude. Doesn't mean squat diddly, diddly squat. Um, cause like, yeah, you may have a bunch of followers, but I got, they're, they're all over the world or they're not real at all. They might just be totally fake. Um, so that was the takeaway is I got to, I have to stifle my expectations a little more. I need to, a little more. I need to, uh, I need to keep the expectations low. You know, there's a study out there that showed that if you keep, people who keep low expectations are happier. That's what I learned from Andy Gold who you should check out. Uh, uh, let me plug, let me plug them right now. Andy gold comedy, um, and Pete jr. Comedy. I went on with 
Andy and Pete, and these were the coolest freaking guys. I mean, on this side of the Mississippi and that either side of the Mississippi, because we were we did it, we crossed it, you know. So give them a give them a follow. Check out their stuff. Andy is might be the funniest person I've ever met. Um, he's definitely funnier than me. So go watch his podcast. Don't just stop watching this. Go watch his. Um, and if you're watching Andy's podcast, come watch mine. I know that's not how it works, but the, uh, yeah, the Austin shows were fun, man. Or just the one got to Creek in the cave. It was cool. Got to meet, uh, Rebecca who owns it. And, uh, it was, co- it's cool to meet comedy. You know what I learned about meeting, like going, wh- what I learned from going to, uh, different comedy scenes. Cause I've got, I've, you know, I've, I've, um, visited a few and I've lived with a few different ones. Um, they're all the same. Like you just have, it's just different versions of the same people. That's, you know, uh, it's the same thing when I moved to high schools because I left high school, um, freshman year, I moved, I changed schools from Winnipeg to San Diego. And, uh, you just see like the same, I thought it'd be like hard to navigate, but it's not, it's just the same people go, Oh yeah, I know this kind of person. Oh, I've met you before. I met a version of you before. Um, you know, their personality type. I don't, I try, I don't really buy into a whole lot of that stuff, but I do. I definitely do. Um, I think there are types of people, man. And, uh, you know, you can, there's slight variations, but like, it's like the same thing. It's like, oh, you're just doing the same, the same shit that they're doing back home. Um, oh, look, there's, you know, oh, there's the guy who, um, you know, they, oh, there's the guy who, uh, there's the, there's the goofball. Oh, there's, and then there's the smarty pants. And then there's the guy who, you know, calls me gay. There's this, they're all there. Everyone's, everyone's just the same. Um, so if you, if you try to be, uh, next time you think that like you, you are that person, you know, you're like, yeah, I kind of have, I kind of figured out who I am. Just know that, uh, every city has a version of you. So I wonder what the versions of me are like. I would hate to meet that. Dude, I would not like to meet. You ever met someone who's a lot like you? It's uh It's it's a nightmare. Cuz you see them, you see what they're doing, you're like, "Yeah, I know what you're doing. Oh yeah, I know what you're doing. You're doing this, this and that." And it's you only know it because it's what you're doing. But when you see it in somebody else, you're like, yeah, fuck you. You got to stop what you're, you got to stop that. You lame. Oh, stop trying so hard. But deep down, you know, it's you, you know, it's you who's trying so hard. So I don't know. Maybe I got some issues, but, uh, shows are fun, man. The South is a different place. Holy cow. I saw this one. I was in a bathroom somewhere in Lafayette, a gas station bathroom in Lafayette. And, uh, they had a dispenser in the bathroom next to where you get like paper towels, right? By the sink there. And you put in a quarter and there's options on this, uh, dispenser for types of cologne. So I guess you put in some change and you get a little spritz of cologne so, you know, when you're going out with the boys and you got to fuel up, you know what I mean? You got to fuel up off the highway in Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, let me just stop by this uh, AM, PM slash Wendy's real quick. And then you go in there, you wash up. You're like, what are we feeling tonight, boys? What's the move tonight? You know, you wash your hands. Um, you got a quarter on you. Let's get a little Dracar going for the evening, dude. I'm feeling a little Dracar. Put in your quarter. And then you press that button. And then it just sprays out right at you. So, um, um, you know, I made the mistake of keeping my face a little close to it. So I got it right in my nose. Um, 
but that's kind of how they roll down there, dude. It's like, it's a little more efficient like that, you know, go to the gas station, get a little gator tooth necklace and a freaking spritz of Drakkar, dude. A little eau de toilette. That's what perfumes say on them. O, E A U, E de toilette. It's French, and it directly tra- it directly translates to toilet water, or pardon me, water of the toilet. So I don't know what the hell the French were thinking or putting on themselves when they thought they were smelling good, um, when they created you know, perfume or why, I don't know, but it's toilet water. And I've known that my whole life and I still use cologne Eau de toilette. and they say, that's how you know it's good. That's what people say. That's how you know it's real. If it says Eau de toilette. Okay. Gross dude. Literal toilet water. Anyway, it's, uh, it was a cool, it was a fun trip. I got some interesting people. A lot of nice people. Um, no one, uh, no one tried to step to me, which I thought for sure someone tried to step to me. Oh, so okay, so Austin was cool. Um, I, uh, I got some uh, some gummies, some gummies that you know alter your state, and uh, and that was nice to have for the duration of the trip because there were some long drives and like you know help get to sleep and stuff. But uh, it was this bag that was like 500 milligrams with 25 um, little gummies in them, right? And each gummy was about 25 milligrams. 25 times 25? Mm, I think that checks out. Uh, I don't know, actually. What is 500 divided by 25? This is so embarrassing. 500 divided by 25 Mm. is indeed... Okay, 20. So there were... 25 little gummies each with 20 milligrams and so that was nice but then i was taking you know maybe a couple here maybe one before a couple before bed you know maybe one in the day and and i was but then on the last day i'm looking in this bag and it's like i'm not i can't take it with me i can't take it back it's not legal in either state that i was in with it so i had to uh I'm looking at this bag and I'm like, we're getting to the airport to drop me off. And there's like six left. And uh, I'd already had two that day. I'm looking at six more. I'm looking at the barrel of six more gummies. Uh, Six times 20 is 180. Um, And I can't just throw it out at the airport. I felt that's how I felt at least. I can't just throw it out at the airport. So I just ate them all. And I made it onto the plane. I was able to get that far. I sat down middle seat between two dudes and I fell asleep. I fell. I crashed so hard, dude. I like blacked out and I woke up a couple times from me falling forward and waking up like that. And then I just would go back to sleep. I fell asleep before we took off and I woke up as we were landing in just a haze and I was just looking around you know, you woke up, you know, a couple times in between and see, oh, shoot, they brought the drinks. The guy, guy's got a Sprite next to me now, all of a sudden, back to sleep. And then, but I, when I woke up, I, at the, when we landed, I don't know what the hell happened. I slept for three and a half hours. And I was just like, man, there's no way I wasn't bothering these dudes sitting next to me. Like, I'm sure I fucking snoozed on a shoulder on a dude's shoulder because i was in the middle seat there's no way i just i just fell asleep sitting up like a freaking like a mummy dude like there's no way i must have like and my neck didn't hurt that bad when i woke up so i'm I just i didn't say anything i just got up once i was able to and got out of there i didn't say anything to either guy um, but they didn't, you know, they, nobody was mad at me when I woke up. That would suck because I was still very out of it. You know what I mean? The plane reached, you know, cruising altitude, 20, 30,000 feet. 
maybe even 40, I don't know. Um, and when the plane landed, I was still up there. You know what I mean? I was still, I was still cruising at like 30,000, baby. Um, but I got, you know, had got my stuff together and I got out of there. Um, yeah, dude. Um, New Orleans was cool. Got, went down to, uh, Bourbon Street, uh, saw a parade. I jumped in a parade and became a part of something. For once, I was accepted by a community. Um, you know, the thing about parades, man, is like, man, how far could you lead people? That's my question. Is like, when they're just following, there's a lot of people. There is, there must have been at least a couple hundred people in this parade. And at the front, it was something about like, Greenpeace or environment stuff but then like you know there's so many people the people at the back people in the middle people even right behind the sign might not even know what the hell they're marching for so I thought that would be kind of a fun idea to start a march with with something but then change the banner um, once you get enough people so that looks like it's something you know a little silly like uh you know, like this one was like, you know, protect uh, the environment or use less water or whatever bullshit. Um, but then like as they get enough people, they just like pull a pull a cord. And now the banner says like, you know, um, you know, it says like, you know, feed, feed babies um, sour candies. I don't know, something like that. Something just a little disruptive or, you know, like... Um, I would change it to like, uh, you know, uh, like, like pride for not having any stamina in bed. You know what I mean? Like the, you know, finish too quick or fast finish. That's what it would say. Finish fast finish. You know what I mean? And it would be, have the word slanted. So it looks like it's moving fast, you know, and it'd be a march for people who, who finish too quickly in bed. You know, or can't get it up. I'm talking about male performance issues. Okay, there's a lot of a lot of pressure for men to perform in bed that we don't talk about. You know, as a as a guy, you got to show up, and this isn't just for straight dudes; it's for anyone. But you got to show up. You know, and you got to get ready to go. Dude, I've been in situations where, like, I was ex I was looking forward to what we were going to do. And I was excited. I was, like, you know, all day thinking about it. Like, oh, man, tonight's the night, you know. And you get there, and it's getting going. And you can't do the thing you wanted to do because something's not waking up you know what i mean something's not uh rising to the challenge if you will i'm trying to keep this a little more clean and um that's embarrassing that's really that really sucks because like you're just thinking like no that you're th i'm thinking like this is everything i want all of this i want this i want to be here and i want to be doing this but then it just won't happen. You're like, what the heck is going on, man? And you're just like talking here. You're, you're just looking, just talking to your dick. You're trying to telepathically talk to your dick. Like, just just do it. Just work. Will you not just work? But it won't. Sometimes it just won't freaking work, dude. And uh, that's never happened to me, obviously. But... Uh, one time, um, one time I was at a bar with my buddies and, uh, I was texting with this woman and then she hit me with that text. She goes, Hey, come over. And so I go over, I drive over or I am about to leave and my buddy pulls out a little pill out of his pocket and he says, Hey, would you like an enhancement for the evening? And I'm like, no, bro, I'm good to go. I've never had one of those before. 
I don't need that. I'm, dude, I'm 26. I'm good to go, baby, right? He goes, hey, I'm just saying, you know, makes the night last a little longer. You could do things that you couldn't do naturally, you know. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I took the pill, and then I went to her house. And uh, I get to her place, knock on the door, and then she opens the door, and she's freaking crying, dude. She's not crying, not just crying, she's sobbing, bro. She's like a complete wreck. And it only, within the 15 minutes that it took me to drive to her place, like everything had fallen apart in her life. You know, someone died, someone got kicked out, you know, dog ran away. And she's telling me all this and the pill's kicking in, baby. And I'm just getting rock hard. I'm getting so beyond what I thought I was even capable of, dude. I was, my my pants came up to my freaking knees, dude. I was, it was a problem. I mean, le- lit- legitimately in this situation. And I was like, oh God, I'm so sorry to hear about all of that. Meanwhile, I'm just like, what? Is, like just just pressing up against my zipper, dude. And I had to like bend over to hug her. Like, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. I was like, do you have a binder or something nearby that I could, but she didn't. So, um, the rest of the shows were fun too. Uh, New Orleans. I mean, the show was okay. Not a lot of people, but we still had fun. Uh, Baton Rouge. It was a smaller room. So the laughs, you know, kind of were more booming. And then uh, Lafayette, Lafayette was probably definitely had the most people and uh, it was very fun, but they were getting so hammered all night. So by the time I went up last, by the time I went up, dude, they were gone, bro. So that was kind of fun, but not really. People call it Afghanistan, which I didn't, I didn't know that. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I was talking to some people, and they're like, oh, man, watch out when you're in Afghanistan. Don't go to this place. I'm like, Jesus Christ, what the hell? How do you earn a nickname like Afghanistan? I thought when they first said it, I thought like, oh, because it's good comedy crowds, you know, Afghanistan. And they're like, no, no, it's very dangerous out here. I don't like when small towns are dangerous. I don't like that. What? Because it's like the the people. What is it? A gang? It's like it's so elementary. It's like oh the oh watch out the bullies are coming through town. It's like give me a break, dude. Unless they have AK forty sevens, in which case, carry on. Laugh gannies. Uh, there's no way that was a unanimous decision for the town, but um, you know I got back home. And uh, I got a text from a woman, and it said, "It said, hey, I was looking through my old messages and found a conversation from October. And she said, let's read it. Let's, f- let's freaking read it. Hi, I was going through my old text and found a conversation from literally October. We met on Hinge, laughing, crying, emoji face. Are you still single? LOL. October, November, December, January. Let's say it was late October. November, December, January. Three months, dude. And I look back at the conversation. She left me on. She she left me on red, dude. She ghosted me for three months, and then has the audacity to hit me up and say, "Hey, you still single, bro? Where do women get the nerve, dog? Where did they get the gall, the gall of this woman? I mean, bro, it's so like." What? Oh, hey, you still single three months later? Like, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, hey, oh, whoa, oh, shit, hey, how you doing? Guys, you need, you got, don't, 
don't do it. Do not do it. Skater boy them. That's what I did. I skater boyed her. I, what I I literally sent her the link to Avril Lavigne's Skater Boy on YouTube. But do and you you, you got to know your worth sometimes, fellas. And I'm trying to I'm not trying to do some Andrew Tate stuff, but like you can I mean, women you need to do a little bit better. That's very that's pretty disrespectful. Um not a oh, oh so uh, I mean for what am I supposed to what am I how am I supposed to react to that? Oh my god, sorry I was busy for 3 months. Oh my god, I'm sorry I totally fell asleep for 3 months. Dude, there I don't believe anything now when they text you that stuff like that. Like bah, bah, So I hit her up. Anyway, we're going to go out later. <sighs> I don't know, man. There's like if a guy, if a guy, look when when dudes do that, we'll do. I'm sure they'll do it. I've done it. I'm sure you look back and you go, oh yeah, this kind of fell flat. And then you just you're just throwing dart. You're just throwing out into the into the void. You know, hey, I guess maybe that's what she's doing. Just trying to, you know, maybe she's just trying to, you know, get laid or something, and then doing the thing that guys do. But man, oh man. I uh, I wasn't too psyched about it, so I took a screenshot and I put it on my Instagram story and uh, I made fun of her. I don't know, man. Um, you know, I when when if that happens to you, if that happens to you, fellas, you know, um, take the. Uh, I, I I like to you know take the petty road, take the high road, which is pretty petty, and uh, it's not that petty because it's like it's just like hey man you didn't you could have said I'm out skis or you could have lied about something else you know oh I'm seeing someone or whatever but to like not reply for three months and then be like oh hey how you doing I don't know man it just seems a little just seems a little weird how we're treating people, how we're treating each other these days. Um, or maybe I'm just too harsh. I don't know. But uh, we're going to go out. And uh, no, we're not. She probably saw that I posted the, that I screenshotted it and posted it. So I can't imagine she'd be too psyched about that. Oops. Anyway, uh, I got a big week this week. That's that's we're pretty much done with the episode. That was a that was a lot already, and uh, got a big week coming up this week. And I'm headlining two shows. If you're in Utah, um, especially uh, you know near the Salt Lake City or Jordan Landing, I'm going to be headlining the Wise Guys Comedy Club at uh, uh, Jordan Landing. Two shows: one show Friday, one show Saturday. Come on out. I'm gonna be doing a lot of new stuff and then try to do more crowd work so let's have some fun with that and um hope to see you there you can get tickets at wiseguyscomedy.com and you can get them at treylam.com and we hope to see you there i've got more dates um i'm doing boise i am mean, I got a few dates in idaho and then i'll be back in california uh next month so keep up with all that on my Instagram and uh, feel free to write in. I didn't even check if we have any freaking write-ins today. Um, so we'll get that going on the next episode and uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, and uh, be well. I'll catch you later. Bye. Take care.